So I wanted to start by looking at a composed block of text, sort of the end product that we'll be going for. This is a little bit of text that the director of our writing center here in the English department was working on um, that's going to print their code of conduct in the writing center. And you'll notice a few things kind of right off the bat. One is that everything looks like it's in mirror image. And there's a reason for that. We, we need our text to be reversed because we're going to print it. We're going to put a piece of paper, it's going to contact it and transfer the ink like a stamp. And so if we want the printed image to be right reading, then we need the text that we compose to be to look like a mirror image like this. The other thing that I want to kind of point out right from the beginning is that when we're working in letterpress, everything is a material object, right? So each of the letters that you see here is an individual piece of type that's movable. If I do this, you can see I can wiggle it around, right? And this comes out of a font case, which I'll show you in a second. We would have a separate case for every font that we're using. And when I talk about a font, I'm referring to a, a letter form, a style of lettering, plus a size. So we have one drawer for 36 point castlin and one drawer for 24 point castlin and so on and so forth. If we want to use multiple styles, we have to navigate between multiple drawers of type. So each of the letters and each of the pieces of punctuation, you can see a piece of punctuation here, this comma, is an object, but also all the spacing between the letters and the punctuation. These are also objects. Uh, we can't just leave empty space here, and I'll explain why in a second, but we need to actually physically separate with these which are called quads. You can see uh, some large quads, some smaller quads here, and we have to fill the whole line. We want every line in a block of text to be nice and flush all the way to the edge. We've got to fill it with space all the way to the edge. In addition to the space uh, within the line, in between the letters and punctuation, we also have these long strips of space. This is referred to as leading. You might have used a graphic design program that still refers to the space between lines as leading. We insert these strips to separate the lines and also to hold them together. We have to have a strip between every line of text. Otherwise, when we try and move this block of text, as we will have to, it will fall apart in places where there's not letting to kind of buttress the loose type. The reason that we're holding everything square is that when we put this on the press, we're going to use these, uh, you see these pieces of wood? These are referred to as furniture. We're going to use furniture and then some additional little mechanisms that you'll see later called coins to exert pressure all the way around in, in both directions, so both vertically and horizontally, to hold the text snug when we're printing. And we want to prevent two things. First, we want to prevent the letters from wiggling around and smearing the print or blurring the print as we're printing. So we need to keep them steady uh, lengthwise so that they don't wiggle. And we also want to prevent um, the wet, the, the ink and the paper from pulling the type away from the bed of the press um, when it makes contact. If the, if the type is too loose and the wet ink and paper attaches to it, it can kind of stick to it and pull it away. So we're going to have to exert that pressure. And in order to exert that pressure, everything has to be perfectly square. It's sort of an engineering problem. What I find really interesting about letterpress is that it's sort of somewhere between uh, sort of art and engineering, right? It both has to be well composed so that everything will hold together, the pressure will distribute correctly, but within those constraints, you're trying to find a way to be expressive, to use typography and also images um, in order to, to get the point across that you're trying to get across.